promoting Santeria. You know, that Caribbean voodoo practice. But they also mixed in some Aztec worship. So it was quite a grab bag of occultism. What is the purpose of the offering for the altar? What is that? Giving back. Giving back to Mother. Giving back to the earth. We just take, take, take and consume. But today, we're asking everybody to give something back. So this is uh, to return something uh, to the earth, right? Yes. The, yes. Na yeah. Since by doing so, we resurrect care. Oh, okay. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Our investigator talked to a local NPR reporter who had had an interesting run-in with what we later learned was the Secret Service. Cool. I was alerted to very fancy cars standing in the uh, side street here, and I walked up, the guy had his window down, and he had all kinds of fancy recording equipment on his seat next to him. And I held the microphone in, and I said, Sir, we are curious about who you are. Would you please tell us who you are? And he said, take your mic out of my car, lady, and step back. And I said, would you repeat that for broadcast and held it even closer? And that's all I could get out of him. And then he sort of tried to run over my toe. He turned his car around and disappeared in that direction. And people said he was on the bridge filming before. So he was somebody from the other side who was documenting this. Right, the wrong side. Okay. The wrong side, yes. <laughs> In studying worldwide occult networks in modern times and throughout history, we always run into the same data. Compartmentalized pyramidal structures with a bunch of well-meaning dupes at the bottom, managers in the central areas, and Luciferian death cult adherents at the top. In India, it is Kali. The Mayans and Aztecs' greatest gods were the gods of death. It was the same in Egypt and in Babylon, as well as Rome and ancient Greece. But what about those sweet little Hawaiians? Ah, you guessed it, throwing virgins into that live volcano. The god of death demands it, so the rest of us can live. The druids would bash their children's brains out and kick them into a peat bog. Noblemen would willingly give themselves up to the Druidic priest to have their throats slit before they were thrown into fiery pits known as bonfires today. Don't forget the European tradition of the burning man. Take your strongest man when times get tough, strap him into a huge wicker effigy of a human and torch him. That will make the gods bring back the fertility. That will make the gods bring life to the tribe. Death brings life. They call it creative destruction, but in reality it is simply a tool of the elite to abuse, subjugate, and dominate their populations for their own good. We're looking at ancient propaganda. In the fall of 2004, while in New York to cover the Republican National Convention, we ran into David Gergen, the Karl Rove of four presidential administrations. Okay, one last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 19... Uh, 96 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor they were the Republicans were criticizing you oh what about Bohemian Grove and then you counter uh, and then you countered them by saying hey I don't run around in the woods naked what did that mean here is the before mentioned Washington Times article where he said I didn't run around naked like they do I, I don't I don't know what I don't know what quote you're referring to I'm not aware of any quote like that uh, listen uh, I am uh, 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 a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, uh, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, uh, frankly, that's, uh, that uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But it's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't we deserve to know? You, you took an under, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you we have public officials you, I'm sorry, you policy. took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up after. 
Oh, I'm I sorry. Just in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what I know what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> Sir, everything uh, the, you, I, 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 don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. I appreciate you, 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 you have you. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been the ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Listen, oh. listen. You go around and and make understandings with people and violate them. You you ambush people on the streets when that's that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. If you want to, you, you can do your free American like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, in you're there, Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders coming out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three pointer. Woo! Look how strangely he behaved when we brought it up. Why is he acting so secretive? And why did he get so angry when he discovered that we'd snuck in? You see, they take it very, very seriously. This is one of the hallmarks of the occult and secret societies. The word occult means secret. Secrecy is part of their religion. They revel in it. And when it's violated, they become extremely angry. How widespread is the occult? The answer is extremely widespread. Occultism in our society, and particularly in our government, and at the highest levels of corporate America, is rampant. It is a well-publicized fact that the Reagans had every aspect of their lives governed by their astrologer. Imagine having your life controlled down to the exact minute that you give a speech by astrology an ancient occult system that believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Eleanor Roosevelt admitted that she performed seances and tried to raise the dead at the White House. Sixty years later, Hillary Clinton had her own seances, attempting to contact Eleanor Roosevelt. Prime Minister Tony Blair and his wife practice the occult every morning. Tony Blair draws a circle and then conjures the spirit that he calls the light. He channels it and makes decisions according to what the spirit tells him. The Blair's admitted occult activities are legion, and so was Adolf Hitler's well-known obsession with dark mysticism. Adolf Hitler belonged to the pre-Nazi death cult, the Thule Society, as well as the Thule Society. Both groups trace their lineage back to the Order of Death founded in 1776 in Ingolstadt University in Bavaria, Germany. Then, of course, it spread to the U.S. with the founding of Skull and Bones. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first of all, he's not the nominee, and uh, but uh, look, I look for. Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society in Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. Three twenty-two, secret number. Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim. But one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction. Aleister Crowley, who dubbed himself the Beast and the most evil man alive, was a fellow traveler with some of the most powerful people in British society, including prominent royals. The Church of Satan, the Temple of Set, the OTO, the Golden Dawn, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the Blue Lodge, the Scottish Rite, the 33rd degree. It seems like there are hundreds of different occultic groups, but all they are are different denominations in the same religion, the Egyptian and Babylonian mystery schools. Albert Pike, who was the supreme grand mason of the entire world, founded the Ku Klux Klan. 
but you don't hear Jesse Jackson calling for his statue to be removed in Washington, D.C. Why is that? Because Jesse Jackson is a 33rd degree Mason. Now don't get me wrong, most Masons are what high-level occultists call porch Masons or outsiders. They themselves are considered neophytes by those in the inner circle or those nearer the top of the pyramid. They're compartmentalized. They believe that their great work, as they call it, is to help society. But in reality, they're being controlled and manipulated. The Knights of the Secret Circle. The Knights of the Golden Circle. This is what high-level KKK members call themselves. But even low-level KKK members do not understand that the KKK itself is part of a larger Masonic organization. Most Masons detest the Klan, but they've never looked on their own temple walls at the paintings of Albert Pike that adorn them and ask themselves why the founder of the Klan is hanging in their temple. This is the power of hidden in plain view, a favorite trick of Luciferians. Where did this dark thinking start, this, this black spirituality? The central thread goes back to ancient Egypt and Babylon with the mystery schools. They knew that knowledge is power, and so secret societies were formed to guard the secrets of medicine, architecture, government, agriculture. Secret societies are nothing more than the first intelligence agencies. Knowledge had to be guarded, but over time, elites abused their control of the knowledge and used it to dominate their populations and the same sciences of control are being used today. That's why the elite today relishes secrecy. They know that it is the fount of their power. They seek to dumb down the population, not just to hoard their secret knowledge to make us even more mindless, more domesticated, like braying sheep to the slaughter. Their religion is the science of sophistry, the science of the con artist, the science of the despot, the dictator, the tyrant, the controller, the charlatan, the liar. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. They are parasites. They are anathema to free, dynamic human societies. Know your enemy. Stand up for love and life and family and resist the New World Order and the Babylonian slave state our enemies are attempting to construct. I want to tell everybody out in TV land how they can come to the Grove, where their elected leaders, along with the big bankers and the heads of media, meet, along with some European royalty, every year to decide how to run the country. You can fly into San Francisco, or you can fly into Santa Rosa, you can even fly into Sacramento, and you know, well, you just drive out uh, to Highway 101, you take... Uh, Highway 12 out west towards the coast. You could get about 10 miles out from the coast, right outside the little town of Monterio. And the town of Monterio, off the main drag, uh, you'll take the Bohemian Avenue. And it dead ends right here at the 2,700 acre Redwood Grove uh, entrance, where your world leaders, um, among other things, set policy for much of the planet and dress up in black and red robes and worship, uh, well, Moli. To purchase additional copies of this film, or to see dozens of other films and important books, be sure and visit InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Or to order, simply call toll-free 1-888-253-3139. Hey guys, get your cameras on. Yeah, what's going on? Huh? I've almost been arrested three times every day, anywhere in the city, uh, city videotaping anything. It is an absolute nightmare. And we're looking for patriots that know what the Bill of Rights and Constitution says and that can see all of this and know that it's a fraud. Four planes in two hours! How can that be? A cop on 9-11 said that it was going to come down. I don't know how he knew that. On the morning of 9-11, the CIA was running a drill of flying hijacked jets into the World Trade Center and Pentagon. Building 7 is further away from the towers and was not hit by planes. So if your building's owned by Larry Silverstein, 
it collapses because he's got a big fat insurance policy. And the project for New American Century said that we need a terrorist attack on the order of Pearl Harbor to get the American people behind a war. Prescott Bush, he did a number of things that were not only anti-American, but were pro-Hitler. A lot of people aren't going to know what skull of, I don't really know what it is. Why don't you talk about NORAD standing down, Michael? Why not the really hardcore 9-11 issues? Thank you, you and goodbye. That's none of your damn business.